Last Lord's Day, we talked about what is Christian marriage. This morning, we're going to follow up on that. Christian marriage is until death. Christian marriage is until death. We'll get that a little bit later, back down in verse number 39. But number of topics that are in this in this section. Let's read, read begin by verse number 1 together. Or excuse me, number 21. Art thou called, being a servant? Care not for it. But if thou mayest be free, use it rather. So this is a condition of servitude. There are a lot of slaves in the Roman Empire, whether they were Jews, whether they are Gentiles. He says if you're called, that is if you come to the Lord Jesus Christ and are genuinely saved, if you're a Christian, then if you're a servant, don't care for it. Care not for it. That for, word for care is, uh, is to have any worry and concern and uh, really be upset about it. Just stay with it. Then it says, but if thou mayest be made free, away from slavery, no longer slave, use it rather. So in other words, he's teaching the Corinthian church there that they're to be glad for the conditions they're in, make the best of it. If the Lord Jesus has saved their soul, if they're genuine Christians, they can use whatever state that they're in. And they can be satisfied with it. You see other things along these verses that we'll see the same thing as well. Let's read verse number 22 together. For he that is called in the Lord, being a servant, is the Lord's free man. Likewise also he that is called, being free, is Christ's servant. Now here's some contrast in verse 22. He that is called, that is he that comes to the Lord Jesus Christ genuinely as, a, as his Savior. That's the calling of God that's accepted. A lot of people are called, but people have got to accept that calling. The Lord Jesus, as Tammy mentioned before she sang, Come unto me, all ye that labor, and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. But he says, Take my earth upon you. In other words, the call, but they accepted this call of the Lord. Now, if they were a servant, if they were slaves, slaves and servants are slaves of man of some kind, and you become a Christian, you're a slave, you're the Lord's freeman. Even if you're in chains, in bond, in slavery, in the Roman area of slaves, the Lord has freed you if you're in Christ. And now, you're, it says, if the Son shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. We know that verse in the Gospel of John. And so, you're, you're a freeman. So, even if you're in prison, Paul was in prison and wrote many letters. He wrote many letters, four different letters from prison. The first Roman imprisonment, one letter from the second Roman imprisonment, didn't stop him. He was the Lord's freeman, even though he's in bondage. And you're the Lord's freeman. Christ has made you free. And then being free, also he that is called, again, a genuine Christian here, he that is called, being free, now is Christ's servant, the Lord Jesus' servant. So you used to be a servant of man, now you're free, but if you're called, you're now Christ's servant. The word servant is not just the regular diakonos, but it's doulos. It's like a slave. It's a metaphor. One who gives himself up to another's will. One who gives himself up to another's will. Uh, where thou goest, I will go. Where thou lives, I will lie. Thy people shall be my people. Thy God, my God. And where he leads me, I shall follow, as Tammy saying. Give himself up to another's will. The will of the Lord Jesus Christ. Found in his scripture. Found in the word. And it means devoted to another to the disregard of his own interests. That's another illustration, definition of doulos, this servant to, devoted to another's interest. What is the Lord's interest? What's found in his words. We've got to read his words and follow the Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> Let's read verse number 23 together. Ye are bought with a price, be not ye the servants of men. Bought with a price. We mentioned that a couple of weeks ago. We preached on that. But redeemed by the price. The price was the death of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary, suffering for the sins of the world. He who bore our sins in his own body, he who was without sin, carried and bore our sins, the sins of the world, that we who trust him might be saved and have everlasting life. He, all you, he's talking to Christian believers there at Corinth. He applied to us as well. But, but the price, not that it costs us. It's a gift. It doesn't cost those who receive the salvation anything. Just receive it, but it cost the Lord Jesus Christ everything. Came from heaven to earth, and then was spat upon, rejected, was crucified, painful crucifixion, taking upon his holy person, 
sinless person, the sins of all humanity. That was penalty. That was a horrible price. And because of that, the next part of verse 23, this is a present imperative, prohibition. It means stop in action, ordering progress. Now for Zairus, we don't even begin to be the servant. This is stop being servants of men. You're bought with a price at Calvary. The Lord Jesus was the one that bore that price, gave the price of his own death. So stop being the servants and slaves of men. Serve the one that bought you. You're brought with a price. Now serve him. You ought to be glad. Wonderful. He's redeemed me. He's given me a home in heaven. He's given me everlasting life. And I'm happy about it. I'm going to serve him. That's what he wants to do. The only way to find out how to serve him is to read his words. And then understand his words and then obey his words. Now, those are three different things. Read, understand, obey. Reading is, is easy. Understanding is a little more difficult, but to obey is much more difficult. A seeing is believing, believing is reading. That's the thing God wants us to do. Don't stop being his servants. Amen. Let's read verse number 24 together. Brethren, let every man wherein he is called therein abide with God. Uh, this in other words, again, it's like the, the first verse we read. Uh, stay put where you are, where you're called. You're called working someplace or doing some things. Just stay there. That's fine. Abide with God. No matter where you are. You could be a servant in the church in the Corinth area. A servant, a slave. But whatever it is, stay there, but abide with God. Abide. Remember in John 15, the Lord Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me bringeth forth much fruit. Without me, he can do nothing. And so we've got to abide with God, no matter what man is doing to us, whatever condition man has placed upon us. And there are lots of conditions that are very, very bad, very, very difficult for us, very painful, uh, whatever it may be, whether it's health problems, whether it's money, money problems, whatever it is, whether, but we've got to abide with God, no matter what man may do unto us. The government problems are around us and they're going to get worse and worse for Christians, Bible believing Christians, with our government the way it's going. Let's read verse number 25 together. Now concerning virgins, I have no commandment of the Lord, but I give my judgment as one that has obtained mercy of the Lord to be faithful. I'm changing the subject now to the virgin, to marriage. He's getting back into marriage. We had that last week on marriage. Here's another section on marriage. Concerning virgins, those that have never been married, had no command of the Lord, but he gives his judgment, one that's obtained mercy, uh, to be faithful. Paul was faithful in whatever condition he was, and those that are married or unmarried or widower, as I think Paul was, uh, he wants them to be faithful whatever state they are. He's going to talk about that a little bit later in these other verses, but uh, let's read verse number 26 uh, together. I suppose, therefore, that this is good for the present distress, I say, that it's good for a man so to be. Now, that's never married. Now, the present distress. Paul knew that from God's revelation to him that in 70 AD, which is a few years later, there's going to be Titus coming in to destroy the temple and all kinds of persecution. And uh, they have to flee to the mountains and Christians will be under terrible attack. And because of that, I suppose, Paul says, I think because it's good for present distress, Stay that way as virgins. We're unmarried. In other words, just don't even bother because it's going to be difficult when husbands and wives have to flee to the mountains, for example. That's what he's saying. And then in verse 27, let's read that one together. Art thou bound unto a wife? Seek not to be loose. Art thou loose from a wife? Seek not a wife. Bound unto a wife. Marriage is until death. That's what all the pastors used to say in their marriage ceremonies. They change it now. These modernistic people that go ahead and they don't say, uh, do you pledge an honor to keep yourself holy until, until death us do part? They don't any longer say until death us do part. They have some other reason, some other thing, as long as you feel like it. and They, they just skip over that. But uh, bound unto a wife and the bound is unto, unto death itself. If you're bound, seek not to be loosed. Now, I realize there's lots of times when you're married, you want to get out. It's just, you just I can't stand it anymore. Now, apparently, that's the way the Corinthians were. Because, again, this is a present tense prohibition. Not an heiress. Don't even begin to seek to be loosed. But 
stop in action, already in progress. Every one of these, many of them, were wanting out of this, out of